Hey, how are you? It's supposed to be sunny today and it keeps raining. So I go outside, I do something that rains. So I thought today, I teach you or show you how I uh, reclaim the beeswax. Is that the right word? How I melt down the beeswax and make it usable again. This is like a really beat up frame. You might have some burr comb or some uh, wax cappings from when you took, uh, you cut the caps off to extract honey or some uh, burr comb like this. All this, I'm gonna render, what, rendering, is that the word? I don't know, you're gonna tell me the word uh, in the comments, but um, let's go. Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. Full disclosure, I'm an amateur beekeeper. This is how I do it. There's probably a better way. If there is, I'd like you to tell me about it in the comments below. The thing about beeswax is you wanna get it hot, but not too hot. And so what I use is this old beat up rice cooker. You can use a hot plate, you can use your gas stove, but those are harder to regulate the heat. They get really hot quick. This thing turns on and just stays on. It doesn't heat up hot, hot. That's a word, hot, hot. So let me show you my rig, all right? It's this and a beat up sieve. And you need a weight of some sort. I'll explain that in a minute, okay? So when you plug in your rice cooker, this little light comes on. And I don't know if you're familiar, but to make the thing cook, the temperature to rise, you press this, this down and it's supposed to heat up, right? But rice cookers are spring activated. In other words, it has a keep warm mode and it has a hotter mode. And the hotter mode is when you've put the rice and the water in it. And that's enough weight to press down that round thing there. I can't press it because I'm holding camera. And that triggers the higher heat setting. So let me show you what I'm gonna do to get this thing on the heat setting I like. This is kind of a long story, isn't it? In the bottom of our rice cooker, I'm just gonna put just a little bit of water. This is how I do it. And then you wanna start out with your cleanest, cleanest cappings here. You don't wanna mix your really dirty wax with your really clean wax, okay? Don't mix this with this. This is already really clean, so we're gonna keep it clean. So if you don't have enough wax cappings to make this thing, the weight actuate the spring, you can take a piece of wood, put it across there, and put some kind of weight on there. If need be, you don't have to. This one, that's pretty heavy. But if you didn't, you could just put the weight on there, press this down, and you notice over here, the cooking light goes on. That's a good thing. Light on, press down, this heats up. So uh, melting beeswax is kind of like watching paint dry, very exciting. But you can also start to work on, if you have some frames and stuff, if this has a wax foundation, you're just gonna kind of punch this out. I'll show you how to do that. If it's a plastic foundation, which I'm a big proponent of, um, I'll link below to the plastic foundation I've found works best. Some There's some really bad plastic foundation out there. So while that's melting, we'll start cleaning these up. This is already lowered. I mean, the weather well, level has lowered and it's uh, getting liquidy. It's starting to melt down in there and it kind of has a waxy bee honey smell, which is nice. This is a frame with wax foundation. So what I do is I just have a long uh, tool. I can't remember what this is called at the moment. So, and I push down And I can sometimes just break out the foundation and the wax comb. Sometimes you have to take the thing apart, but we'll see. So you can, uh, so you've got this now, we're going to, put this into the uh, cooker, not with that cleaner wax, but when we're doing the darker wax. This you can, it looks kind of daunting, but you can clean this up and put in new foundation. Um, there's a little wooden strip here that you pop up, clean out the bottom here, slide this in. This burns very nicely to start fires in your fireplace in the winter, but. 
Some beekeepers will not, if it's really dark comb, um, they will not render it out. It's, it's more work than it's worth. Is that the right phrase? It's a, there's um, what it's called, I think it's called slum gum. It's basically the buildup of larva deposits, uh, bee deposits in here, making this, this was, you know, pristine comb. You know, it looked all nice and clean at one time, but um, it's been living in a house for a long time. So some people won't bother fixing this up. Uh, we'll run a batch through and I'll, we'll see what happens. So that's uh, just about melted. So I'm going to, um, kind of neat the way it dries so fast, or cools so fast. I can add some other light comb that I have. I'm just going to let that melt in and then we're going to pour. Very exciting. This is why you save those yogurt containers. You know, you're like, oh, I got a use for them. Uh, beeswax, okay? This goes down, pour a little bit of water in the bottom of that. That's as hot as you want that, okay? That's going to go in there. Unplug this, lift this out, pour that in there. All right, we're gonna take this really hot stuff, wearing gloves. I'm just gonna put it in a cool place. I have a utility sink, so I usually just sit it in the utility sink um, and let this cool. I usually do it overnight. Um, see what happens. And you see, that's not, that's not really enough weight to trigger the little trigger, uh, the little switch. So I put that on and then I press the button and we let it wait. It's cooking down. Make sure it says cook. Make sure it says cook over there. Let that cook. So this, almost all the beeswax is melted. And just look at that mess there. This is why you don't always want to boil down. Well, that's not too bad, but the super dark comb, even this, maybe not. Um, there is not much beeswax in there and there is a ton of bee material in there. Um, that's a lot to try and get out just to get a little bit of wax that's in the bottom there. So I give that a thumbs down. What you can use really dodgy frames for, you know, this kind of stuff I already punched out of the frame, is swarm boxes or swarm traps, bait hives, whatever you want to call them. Bees love the smell of really old honeycomb. So you could take a beat up frame like this that is pretty wonky, um, stick this in. You can make up swarm boxes or just take old frame boxes, you know, kind of a DIY thing. But this, with some of that spray attractant, I'll link below to the cool spray attractant. How's that, the pheromone come here thing. Um, so anyway, you don't have to try and extract the wax out of all this. This is great swarm attractant. So this has been like four or five hours. This is the clean cappings that I melted down. This is that big mess. Um, again, the darker the comb, the more gunk. I pulled a lot of gunk out of here and this is what's left over. So let me show you. Um, why you put the water in here because it allows you to kind of squeeze this and then we're just going to do it over the lawn here. That's all just water. That's a lot of water. <laughs> but that uh, keeps up, makes a cavity This usually slides right out with no problem. Only on garden fork, right? Everything works perfectly. Oh, here we go. Notice the layers. So this is all the stuff that isn't beeswax. It settles down into the water and then you get clean beeswax. So what we can do is we can scrape this So this is the uh, the one that was really gunky. I pulled a ton of the, uh, just the, the black debris stuff out of there. 
So this, you can see how it's settled to the bottom, but I didn't put any water in it, and I thought I'd see what happens. What I could do with this is I can, I can carve off this bottom piece, and this is just kind of, you don't really want it anyway, but it wouldn't have hurt to put the water in there, and that way the debris goes below the wax. But we can reheat this, pour it back into a cup that has some water in it, um, and this will slowly clean up if you heat it pour it in a cup, heat it, pour it in a cup. You can get this pretty clear, but that's a lot of work for not much beeswax, you know? What are you gonna use the wax for? I'm a big fan of plastic foundation. I'll link below to the kind I like, but I'll take this, I'll melt it, and I'll use just um, a three inch chip brush. And I, even though the foundation comes pre-waxed, I lay on extra wax and I kind of go over it really fast and it builds up a bit. You don't want to dump it on, you're going to go choo -choo -choo. And that's what we do with our beeswax. You can make candles, you can make uh, chapstick, but um, you've put so much work into this, you know, you might think about how you're going to use that. <laughs> there you go. There should be some videos floating around here somewhere, more interesting beekeeping stuff. Again, me, amateur guy. Hey, let's see what happens. Also check out our podcast, Garden Fork Radio. It's me and my friends talking about well, at least what I think is interesting, so. Amateur guy stuff. Yeah. Make it a great day. I'll see you later.